Welcome to My Art and Life. My Art and Life is hosted by the Town of Oyster Bay Arts Council. My name is Lawrence Spear. And I'm Gary Piacentini. And today we have Vincent Ricciardi. How did I say that, Gary? <laughs> that was pretty close. Was it's, it's close. close, close. Right? It's close. What a talent. <laughs> a wonderful singer. Richard also is a, uh, an actor. Vincent is also an actor, studio artist, opera, musical, beautiful, beautiful. And he does voice. windows. And he doesn't do windows, <laughs> for sure. Um, I'm sorry. We've had lots of talent on this show, and, and Vincent is, is one of the best, if not the best. So listen closely. Vincent, um, I'm going to give you a quote from Mario Lanza. I want you to tell me what you think. I sing from the heart. I sing the words of a song and really feel them from the top of my head to the tip of my toes. I sing as though my life depends on it. And if I ever stop doing that, then I'll stop living. Uh, interestingly enough, Mario Lanza didn't have a very long life. Um, what do you think of that quote? Um, I think that's a really great um, sort of summary of how he approached songs. If you ever listen to the – stylistically, every phrase had a meaning. Sometimes every word had a meaning. It just happens to be how he used to sing a song. I, th I think a lot of great singers – often have their own interpretations. You, you always hear, when you hear about great singers, about great phrasing. Mm -hmm. And for Mario, it, it was all about an entire commitment to whatever the song was, whether it was an operatic aria or just a pop song of the day. He, he was fully committed to telling the story of the song word by word, phrase by phrase. And if he wasn't able to do that, it wasn't worth singing. How about you? Me? Um, I just... I love telling a story when I sing, and I, I think uh, Mario's approach can help you do that. Um, so everything is still about phrasing <laughs> with me. Mm -hmm. um, um, when I sing, I try to make sure that whatever's, whatever I'm singing is just coming from my core, whether it's a love song, whether it's a sad song, whether it's a heroic song. If I'm completely committed to it, um, I know that the audience will feel that and they'll connect with me. And the most important thing about singing, and I don't care if you're on the operatic stage or you're sitting in a bar with a guitar, mm -hmm. is connecting to the audience, is, is sharing that story, whatever, whether you wrote it or whether one of the great artists in the past wrote it, is sharing that story with whoever's willing to listen. Yeah. One last quote from Mario Alonso. I sing each word as though it were my last on earth. I mean, that is... Um, that is a depth and a passion uh, that that seems to be a common common element in everyone who's in the arts that really takes it more than anything else in life. What do you think about that? I I sing each word as though it were my last on earth. I think I think he's just trying to say, you know, if you're going to sing, it's got to be everything. Right. It's got to be everything you are. Or why are you doing it? If, if, if you don't throw everything you have into the art that you're in love with, whether you're a professional or whether you're a hobbyist, it doesn't even matter. If, if, it, if it's not everything you are, you're missing something. You're missing the point. Well, he happened to be a, a decent actor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a, a fairly decent actor, obviously a very mm -hmm. fantastic singer. Right. Um, um, he had a lot of fun. He, had a, uh, he always cast very well around him. Mm -hmm. with, with people who would make him even be better than he is, which is always smart casting. <laughs> <laughs> but not, he, as much as we associate him as with opera and an operatic voice, he didn't do that much opera. In fact, very little. Yeah, he only did. Um, he only did two professional performances of an opera. Most of his work was was on the stage as a concert artist, and. Um, you know, he bounced around. Uh, he did a lot of concert work with uh, Francis Eind and George London, who both went on to the Met uh, when they were all young. And eventually he stood in for a tenor who wasn't able to do a concert at the Hollywood Bowl. And that's where Louis B. Mayer, actually, who was in the audience, saw him and decided this was going to be the next guy I want in one of my films. And that's, that's the voice I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd like to hear you sing. The audience wants to hear you sing. Um, be My Love. You could sing this now. We have, it's on track four of 
of the backup album. Sure. Background album. In my love for no one else can end this yearning, this need that you and you alone create. Just fill my arms the way you filled my dreams, the dreams that you inspire with every sweet desire. Be my love and with your kisses set me burning. One kiss is all I need to seal my fate And hand in hand we'll find love's promised land There'll be no one but you for me Eternally If you will be mine land there'll be no one but you for me it Was Vincent Ricciardi? Remember the Sun name? Live, <laughs> live. It's amazing getting all these people here too. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I mean that was that was Mario's uh, first big hit song. I mean it was 1950, and he was out selling Frank Sinatra with that song. It was the greatest selling recording artist of that year. Was that part of any uh, show? Or that was um, a featured song from his second movie called uh, Toast of New Orleans. The Toast of yeah. New Orleans. Yeah. And in the movie, uh, he and Catherine Grayson sing it as a duet a few times. Right. Um, but they released that as a single. Uh, Ray Sinatra conducted, and it, Ray Sinatra, Ray Sinatra, Fra- Any Frank's Frank's cousin. Really? As far, yeah, I think they were cousins. Um, was a was actually a popular conductor of of popular music. He worked with Frank every now and then. Uh, I believe he established his career before Frank did. Um, never, he didn't help Frank. He let Frank do you know get there on his own, mm-hmm. and that's okay too. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, he was a very, very well-known conductor at the time, and he conducted a lot of Mario's popular music. Oh, I, I didn't know that. No. How did, um, what got you started into singing? What age? What was the influence? Um, when I was uh, about eight years old, I started doing uh, solos with the choir. Uh, so I, my mom sang, and my grandfather was a professional singer. Um, he grew up with Vic Damone, and um, he was a crooner, and he used to sing all the old Italian music, all the old uh, popular music. He introduced me to quite a lot of m- really great music from uh, Jimmy Roselli, Sergio Franchi, Mario Lanza, um, obviously Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and all, all the famous Italian-American singers. Um, but my mom also sang. My mom has this beautiful Karen Carpenter meets Linda Rodstadt type of sound. Mm-hmm. And Not she was bad. a professional uh, mm-hmm. singer. Uh, oh, she for was a, professional. We all, at, at one point or another, most of my family has sought to sing professionally. Um, I was sort of, I was kind of a pop singer as a kid. 
I fell in love with musical theater as a teenager. And I did a whole bunch of different musicals, both at my high school um, and some local theaters on Long Island. And then um, when I went to college, I went for theater. For I was going to study theater and I was going to study music. And right. um, I walked into my first voice lesson and I sang a little bit for my, my voice teacher. And my teacher looked at me and she goes, oh, my God, I, I have a homework assignment for you. When you go home tonight, I want you to listen to UC Bjorling, very famous operatic yes. tenor from the Met. And I want you to listen to Mario Lanza. And I was like, Mario who? <laughs> And it was Marty. fine. Yeah, I know. So, so I go home and I, and I don't have any of this music, but I was like, yeah, let me go over to, to, to grandma and poppy, my, my grandfather, parents' house. And I go over and I say, hey, hey, Graham, grandma, do you have any, um, any Mario Lanza? She goes, oh, Mario Lanza. I love him. It was such a beautiful voice. And so it was kind of fun because as I started discovering this music, I, I kind of developed this great relationship with my grandparents because they loved this. This was the music of their youth and music that they loved. So I was able to go over there and sing. In fact, my grandfather, because he was a singer and he was a Napolitan, he was a Neapolitan, mm -hmm. um, taught me a lot of the first Neapolitan songs that I, that I sing in my acts, like, like O Solo Mio or Ite Vorio Vesa o Torna Soriente. Um, and actually, when I sing them, I try to sing them in as close to as accurate a Neapolitan dialect as I can. I know some of my some of my friends who are from Naples, who I've oh met over the years. God, they, <laughs> yeah, they they nudge me. They nudge me. Say, oh, you you didn't do this. Uh, you you did this a right. little different. But you know, I, I try to pay homage to that original language it was written, and I try to sing it in the dialect. But I mean, that was one of the most amazing things was developing such a great relationship based all around music right. with, with my But you started family. out with theater, though. But I started with theater. Yeah. So my, my, my very first love was West Side Story. I fell in love with West Side Story. Um, one of my favorite musicals. And as I got a little older, I fell in love with Phantom of the Opera. And then as I got a little older still, I fell in love with Jekyll and Hyde. I actually performed, played that. I actually performed Jekyll and Hyde at Cultural Arts Playhouse in 2002. It had just closed on... No, 2002. 2002, was I, it I believe. Old Beth Page? A, oh, when it was an old Beth Page. They okay. moved. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know where they are now, but um, they had a really nice little uh, three quarter round theater. Yeah. And, they, and that used to be a movie theater. Yeah, I was yeah, told. The I, Beth View. Mm hmm. Uh, but it was cool. So I was. Mary Poppins there with my sister about nine times. <laughs> oh, wow. Say, Damn it. <laughs> but I was like 19, so they didn't cast me as the lead in Jekyll and Hyde. They, they asked me to be the understudy. They, they said, if you'll understudy the role, we'll give you like three performances of the role. That way, you know, no one can ever say you didn't perform it. You performed, you had three roles under your belt. Mm -hmm. And it was cool. I got to understudy a really, really nice uh, Broadway actor by the name of uh, Richard Todd Adams, who was like from Phantom of the Opera. He had played Phantom. He'd played Raul. I think he played Raul and then and worked his way into Phantom over the years. And a uh, really, really nice guy. He was really mm -hmm. cool and uh, was always willing to give me advice if I needed it, which was really cool because when you're 19 and you're doing this professional stuff for the first time, even if it's a community theater, if they've got some professional union guys in there, you, you take what you can. You learn what you can from you, these you guys. Learn, yes. And when the, when the artists are really cool and they, they, they have no problems with you picking their brain, that's a really wonderful experience. Yeah, your, your education also had its beginnings at BOCES. And I did. BOCES was on a thread. Uh, until the a Long few Island, ago. yeah, yes, the Long are. Island uh, High School of the Arts. I, I didn't. One, I, you are one excellent example of why BOCES must continue. Yeah, I'm, I was so enthralled. I, I had done a bunch of benefits for them. They do benefit concerts every year, so I have done a few of them over the years. When I was available, I would come sing, just sing a song, just this whole bunch of alumni, some teachers. That were, we're all singing, um, you know, or performing skits, or just showing what people learn at this school and why it's so different. I can't tell you how far it put me ahead of some people when I finally went into college, having that one year of real theater training under my belt, then going for theater in college, how much further ahead it put me. And there were a few of us that mm -hmm. who were actually there who went to Adelphi. And it was kind of cool to make that transition together and to see, wow, like I did this already. Like I'm, I'm there. I, I have a sense on how to break down a monologue. I have a sense on how to use phrasing to tell a story. I have a sense on how to forget everything and then let like life move the monologue along. So it was amazing when I finally started training at Adelphi, what that school, what Long Island High School of the Performing Arts did for me um, to put me ahead of the game. 
uh, in a way that just your standard high school theater teacher is not going to give you. That recognition was first given by Billy Joel. Now they're doing benefits uh, on Broadway for mm-hmm. BOCES and uh, it's really beautiful. I'm, I'm, I was so excited when Billy Joel said, you know what, Long Island needs this place because it really does. Excellent. Hey, well, we shall continue right after this um, message or so. We are at WCWP 88.1 FM. We are My Art and Life with La- Lawrence Spiro, Gary Piacentini, and Vincent Ricciardi. We'll be right back, okay? Chris, take it away. Welcome back to My Art and Life. My name is Don Spiro. And I'm Gary Piacentini. And we are listening to Vincent Ricciardi and his wife. Emily Ricciardi. Let's hear it. Good last name. singer Emily how did you meet her um uh Emily and I met uh doing an opera in uh, uh, an operetta in 2008 in Brooklyn with the Brooklyn Heights players we were doing Pirates of Penzance and I was starring as Frederick and she was starring as uh, Edith the second soprano in the operetta and uh we just hit it off uh not quite at first but it was really kind of funny um I started training vocally at the time with the music director I was, um, you know, I was still learning my voice and figuring it out, and it was starting to be more of an operatic instrument than a musical theater instrument. And um, during the uh, the the show, uh, the music director was coaching me just so that I I was getting really tired singing, and uh, you know, I wasn't doing anything right. I just I had the natural ability right. with no idea what the heck I was doing. And um, he and I started training, and uh, she was training with him. He's and a ra- he's a rabbi, you said. He's a rabbi. He's actually the. Um, He's the music director of St. Monica's Church in the city. Great. He's also an interfaith rabbi. Um, And he sort of adopted us as like two of his kids. And he's married to a Methodist, right? And he's married to a Methodist. (laughs) We're we're a nice group of people who believe that, you know. Who was playing the piano, by the way? That was David. That was David, my voice teacher. Oh, okay. Um, And he's he's also the arranger of the Be My Love track that you guys heard. Okay. Um, And uh, a couple of the tracks actually on my album. 
Uh, he arranged that. He co-arranged Renata with a friend of mine. Who what about did, the prayer? Did he arrange that? No, the prayer was just um, a track that I was able to acquire. Um, all, most of the album was done with karaoke tracks. Some of mm-hmm. them are full orchestra, but they're still karaoke tracks. Um, and uh, there were a few that just aren't made. No one, no one, <laughs> no one usually sings "Be My Love" in the original key with the high C. Oh, that and so, was just <laughs> so wonderful. when I was tracking it well, down, need, we well, had you a, need an operation after that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when we were, we were we were planning the album, there were a couple of songs that I knew I wanted that I knew I couldn't find a good karaoke for. Um, and Be My Love was one of them. Granada was another. Um, and I think the only other one that was, that we made was a Spanish Eyes, which was an original song. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, so David, that's David playing piano. And, uh, so we met doing that. And originally I was, a, I kind of started off as a crossover artist, sort of like Josh Groban. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I had really, Did your voice change? My voice Did- changed. Um, I remember when I was, when I was a little younger, it was just a little bit, it was, it was, it was like a sweet tenor voice. And uh, as I got older, it, it got a little bit more ballsy. <laughs> um, we can say that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I was just kind of figuring my voice out. And we, I started training with David. And she was training with David. And David had asked me to come uh, sing with the choir that he works with at St. Monica's to see if I could do like a solo or two. And then she was cantering that day. And then so we started hanging out. And, you know, one thing led to another. And... Uh, I was already doing kind of performances around New York City and in various places. Um, you know, a lot of mix of musical theater, some Italian, you know, like Italian folk song, like Neapolitan song. And um, as my voice started to develop, I started to lean more towards the operatic end of it. Yeah. More Mario Lanza, less Josh Groban. Still do some of the great Josh Groban stuff too, but um, it, they, I kept at getting asked to do longer and longer shows. And then when you start doing these concerts, a concert is different than an opera. And an opera... You sing a bunch of, you know, you sing a handful of songs and duets and stuff. And then the rest of it is recitative. So you, you get, your voice gets a chance to rest. And you rest. When you're doing a concert, you're singing like one chestnut after another. No chance to rest. <laughs> so, None whatsoever. So as, as people wanted longer and longer shows, um, and people were always like, oh, can you bring someone to sing duets with? Can you bring a woman to sing duets with? I started bringing her on as a guest artist. So first it started off with her doing a song or two solos, and we would do like two duets. And then people loved our relationship on stage, how we interacted, um, how we played together on stage. They loved watching us sing love songs, uh, singing to each other because they they knew we were together because it meant something. Um, Mm -hmm. And so by the time we were engaged, it was a full full out duo show. And we performed, you know, throughout the tri-state area, uh, Connecticut. We've been out all all the way out to Scranton, Pennsylvania, um, New Jersey a lot. Long Island, a lot. We perform at a lot of the libraries. I know mm-hmm. uh, this winter, this fall, we've got a couple of libraries coming up. Um, some of them still in the works, but you know, it's it's all on our website, which is e and v entertainment dot com and and a n d okay e a n d v entertainment dot com. Um, like our schedules there, and um, people can come check us out. I really hope you do because um. I think part of what makes our relationship so special is really when we, we sing, we really want to touch people. We, we want them to go on this journey that is whatever show it is, whether it's an Italian-American show, which we do a lot because obviously that's kind of my specialty. We'll do sometimes we'll do like a night on Broadway and it'll mm-hmm. be all of Broadway music, which is really what Emily does best. But we do a huge mix of everything. And I think people really enjoy that. Um, there aren't a lot of singers who do this stuff anymore. No, no. not well. Um, Right, and um, right. and it's been a, a blessing because for whatever reason, while opera never necessarily took off for me and while uh, – although Emily performs with the New York Gilbert and Sullivan Players and she's toured around the world. Um, she went over to pir- – playing pir- – uh, went over to England doing Pirates of Penzance playing Edith with them. So oh, she boy. had a leading role and they toured England, which That's is really cool. That's got to be a challenge too but at the same time, right? It seems like the concert work seemed to call to us. Just – maybe it's just the way we sing to the audience. Maybe it's just our banter. Maybe it's the two of us together. Maybe it's just I- – I think we just enjoy – sharing our love of music, especially this type of music, with an audience that wants to hear it. Now, you have a recording of The Prayer would you, on track 10. Um, would you tell us about, uh, so, about the recording So, um, you know, people give Andrea Bocelli a little bit of a hard time. He's got, he doesn't have the biggest voice in the world, a very beautiful voice, though. Um, so a lot of opera singers are always like, oh, it's not really a big voice. For me, it was that bridge gap. When I was 15, 
um, you know, I was I would listen to the three tenors and I was just like, wow, I could never sing like that. But Andrea Bocelli, who had a softer approach to sort of operatic music, I was like, wow, maybe I can sing like that. So for me, it was the bridge gap between mm-hmm. popular music and opera, which is what crossover really should be. Yes. Having someone with a real voice who can really bridge the gap between them. And I think this was probably the first Andrea Bocelli song I absolutely fell in love with. And um, I've loved it ever since. It was one of the, it was one of the first op- more operatic pieces that I started to do in my repertoire even before I was really training to sing opera. Um, and uh, when Emily and I started doing our shows, it was the first thing I said, this is, this is one of the duets we need to learn. This is one of the duets we need to learn. And, uh, and we've performed it all over the place. And I know it touches everybody because it's, it's poignant. And it's, Where did you record it? Um, we recorded it at Garari Studios at the, the uh, New York Opera Center mm, in, in New York City uh, with, uh, with uh, Jeremy Gerard uh, engineered it. Uh, he mm-hmm. actually engineered my whole album. Uh, really cool. So it was really nice because we we're, were singing in a hall and um, we we're singing with a guy who understood big operatic voices and also understood popular voices. So this is more of a pop turn to it, but it still has a big kind of operatic feel. And, so uh, it, cu- it cuts across all generations. Yeah, yeah. The Prayer. Find a place, guide 
us with your grace. Give us faith so we'll be saved. And of the care, I your chest so Say it again. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Thanks. It must be fun around your dinner table when you <laughs> just kind of like t- sing to each other. The holidays are a blast because we uh, all sing. Uh, uh, um, my, my brother sings. My brother's like an, uh, an R&B singer. So uh, while he doesn't do it professionally, he's got a wonderful voice. So yeah. we have a lot of fun. And my sister's actually a jazz singer. And she does do it professionally. She she just do a lot of wedding bands, but she'll do private events and stuff. And um uh, and we just uh, we break it out, and we're like the Von Trapps, and everybody's in <laughs> harmony, and we have a lot of fun. And Emily was uh, a wonderful addition to our family, which was pretty awesome. That you know, when 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 I brought her over, I think my mom and her were listening to the the Carpenters Christmas album, and just singing like their hearts out together. Mm-hmm. And my mom was like, "Okay, you better marry this one," <laughs> you know, really? as, as an Italian mom does. Not to an Irish. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> so she had to be ultra special. No, the, Emily is really wonderful. And I, I think people see our close relationship when we're performing together, which is one of the things people enjoy about our shows so much. You know, the um, that family tradition of getting together and singing is something I remember young, sit, uh, sitting on the banister watching my family. My mother played. My father did violin and harmonica, <laughs> and they sang. Then they argued politics. And then, <laughs> at the, the same time. At the same yeah. time. Oh, I, I believe that. I believe that. <laughs> you know, my uncle said, Larry, get me some water. <laughs> and he just start <laughs> arguing again. But then they sang again. That, that, that's not done anymore. No, I mean, it's amazing. That's not done. It's amazing you're how a young man. You're together. 33, and you ca- you still have that. You're so uh, I mean, I'm very fortunate. Um, Emily came from a family that, uh, that loved music. Our family loves music, and so it's just it's just a run. It's just a wonderful thing. I mean, mm-hmm. it just it bring, brings people together, and I think people are missing that. I think that's why, you know, when we're performing, people really enjoy it because we're bringing some of that. We're sitting at home around the piano to our show. See, it, we're never. It it's 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 always about welcoming people to enjoy the music we're about to do, and I think people really they take that they take that in why why is it italian tenors i mean you know you have pavarotti caruso uh Ricciardo. what's what is it um, richard tucker, that, that, <laughs> richard, richard, richard richard tucker. okay uh, <laughs> gary's got me yeah this is As true a matter of fact they said uh, something about richard tucker when he was singing the italian stuff mm-hmm. he was more italian than the italians yeah. um they called him the jewish yeah. caruso yeah i mean he really had a, a hell of a voice really really wonderful voice and he had a really great, great grasp on the language and how to sing it. Right. You know? So, um, well, there's a Latin tradition in many Jews. Mm-hmm, this is also very true. Safari Jews. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I don't know. I, I, think it's, I think it's the language. I think it's the personality. I think every ethnic group has their own little identity. And Italians, it's, it's like music and food and love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> In that order. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot the drink, though. Yeah, I forgot the drink. And, and vino. And vino. Um, but I think it's just, it's, it's just part of our culture and our personalities. Um, that sort of coming together, having a few drinks, having some pasta, singing. Uh, and, uh, you, know, and you know, if you're like most Italian-American families, when, when you're over, you're family. And so everybody's doing it, whether you're Italian, black, white, Hispanic, Jewish, doesn't matter. If you're in the house, you're family. We're all going to have a family dinner as a family. And that's just how I know my family was. Uh, I don't know how many other people are, are like that. I know my grandfather was like that and my mom was like that. Mm-hmm. And it's just uh, a wonderful tradition that we have in my family. And uh, music is a huge part of that. Which is wonderful. Well, they come over. They make food. They make pasta. They make too much food. Exactly. We're, we're, we're feeding the army, <laughs> and and you know we're not using the good china because the pope's not coming over. Uh, it, you also uh, you write that you know you're still pursuing um, film, stage. 
what can we look forward to seeing? Um, I, uh, I did a lot of stuff in recent years. Um, I did some independent films. You know, you do an independent film, maybe they go somewhere, maybe they don't. I was doing a lot of new musicals. Mostly what I got into doing was recordings. Mm -hmm. So I recorded yes. the, the concept album of a musical starring Christopher Lee. And I Christopher who? Christopher Lee. Sir Christopher <laughs> Lee. Uh, and um, I actually recorded a few duets with him between the two concept albums of this new musical. Right. And it's available on iTunes. It's called Charlemagne. Um, by the Sword and okay. by the Cross. We're going to get back to that yeah, yeah. We're going to take a break. And uh, you're listening to My Art and Life with Lauren Spiro, Gary Piacentini, and Vincent Ricciardi. Okay, 88.1 FM. Chris, take it away. Welcome back to My Art and Life, an excellent show. We have Vincent Ricciardi. Uh, He's getting it wonderful. now. He's getting it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> With practice. Uh, wonderful voice. If you've listened uh, through the whole show, we have some beautiful opera. We have some standard. Um, and you're also into acting, into performing, and uh, yeah. musical. Tell us about that. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying... Um, I, I got really into uh, recording music uh, when I was about 19 years old. Yeah. I was doing a community theater show. I mentioned to a friend of mine in the show, his name was Jack Walker, um, that I was uh, interested in doing a demo and no idea what I was doing, where to go, how to do it. And he goes, oh, you can just come over and do it. I'm a, I'm a composer. That's what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. And I have a studio and just come over one Saturday and we'll, we'll cut some tracks. And um, it became something very fun. Um, Studio vocals are kind of interesting. You really have to be on the money all the time, and if you at least if you want to get in and out and do it. Um, and he started using me for stuff, and then I started putting my name out there. Um, and there was a great website called E Session. And when was this? Uh, this was uh, back in the early thousands, so probably the mid thousands, like two thousand five. I, I created a profile on a website called E Session dot com which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore. And this is really before Dropbox. This is this place allowed you to like, oh, I can do a recording in my studio. Okay, you can do right. a recording yeah. in yours and we can upload it. And people would literally hire me and I would record stuff in my little basement studio and it would be part of, uh, you know, a bigger album. So I, I started getting, doing stuff like that and recording a lot of musicals, either there or I'd go into a big studio or whatever, whoever was hiring me wanted to do. And I ended up recording um, an album with Christopher Lee, um, Saruman. <laughs> from the Lord of the Rings, um, <laughs> as well as I can't, countless well, I movies. Heard he did some like heavy metal stuff. Too. That was the thing; it was a heavy metal album. Oh but because God. he, really? yeah. because yeah, he had an operatic metal. voice, uh -huh. they wanted another opera singer who could match him to play his younger self. And so I recorded several duets with him on both of these concept albums, um, including the Bloody Verdict of Verdun, which was like the first one from uh, from Charlemagne. Uh, by the Sword and the Cross, and then he released another one, Charlemagne the Omens of Death, and it's kind of like a remake of the first album, with, but it's like more real serious heavy metal. The, the first one was kind of like a rock musical, so there was big string sections and stuff behind all these crazy rock guitars, and this one was just like, no, we're just going to do heavy metal. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then I recorded a couple of extra things Charlemagne, for the second the one. Charlemagne, the omens of death, really uplifting. You know, After yeah, that, I mean. Sound of music. I know, I know. But, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty cool to, you know, they're talking Rolling Stone, they're talking about the opera singer on the track. They didn't mention me by name, but I'm the opera singer on the track. So, I mean, that's a pretty cool thing when you think is, about it. Yeah. Um, nice. And, you know, I did some independent films, and I did a lot of mu new musicals off-Broadway. And, and you've written music, too. And, I, you know, for a while I was writing music. Um, I, wrote a, I wrote a song for a movie called At the Sinatra Club, which was a mob yeah, movie. Yeah, I see that. Um, uh, mob movie. It didn't really go anywhere, but, you know, it's, you, can, you can rent it on, on Amazon and a couple of the other rental places online. And um, I wrote a song for that called Sometimes You Gotta Get Away, which is like a crooning piece, but they wanted like a Frank Sinatra That's type it. thing. We have a copy of um, uh, Spanish Eyes, which you can do live for us. I, I can do live, yeah. Uh, Spanish Eyes was a song that I wrote um, a number of years ago, and when I was making the album, I wanted to put at least one um, original piece on it, and that just seemed to be the one everybody loved. So, yeah. Wait, wait, getting back to the Sometimes You Gotta Get Away, is that like a takeoff on the man that got away or the girl that got No, no, it's just, it's just a simple, like, uh, Sometimes You Gotta Get Away. 
I even sn- the, uh, there's even snaps in in the recording. Um, I had a lot of fun with that one. Right. But no, Spanish Eyes was um, I just I was writing this. I had this song in my head, and it was like I wanted a Latin feel, and it, it just came out, and I, it, people really love it. So I wanted to make no, sure it was on the you, album. You you changed. You had a different voice when you sang that. It wasn't. I did. How but, do you switch gears um, like that? So you just it's like singing softer, which is easier. Um, believe it or not, I find the opera is easier. Really? Um, maybe it's just because it's more natural. It's what, it's, it's what my voice was trying to do for so long. Uh-huh. that now that I know how to do it, it's really hard for me to sometimes pull it back. But, um, but you know, you just, you just do it. And I love, I love singing all sorts of music. And, uh, yeah, this is a little bit, this is a little bit more of a light touch. Okay. We'll hear Spanish Eyes, which is on your album, number seven. But we're doing it live. distant place I'd find myself lost in your warm embrace I will lay you down hold you in my arms while gazing in so I'm already gone When you're looking back at me I can't help but let you in Deep within your Spanish eyes And all my harsh temptation I fall hard and I fall fast Feel the love's burning desire Deep within your Spanish eyes I can feel my soul on fire Yeah, yeah Oh I feel so helpless As your skin meets mine And you seem to stop All space and time Deep inside my soul You've staked your claim And heaven only knows How you drive me inside In me, I can't help but let you in Deep within your Spanish eyes I know my heart's your temptation I fall hard and I fall fast Feel the love's burning desire Deep within your Spanish eyes I can feel my soul on fire I know my heart's a 
temptation I fall hard and I fall fast Feel the love's burning desire Deep within your Spanish eyes I can feel my soul on fire song very nice thanks you wrote the song right yeah i wrote that song now, what year yeah. um i wrote that in maybe 2004 and I, I worked on that with a gentleman named um andrew ardito was that did, the wife did, singing too in the background no that's me singing in the background the, the, that, th- th- those are my vo- vocals in the background okay Vinny, we got to talk <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, a gentleman, gentleman by the name of Andrew Ardito and I uh, met through MySpace of all things and he was a composer and he really loved what I was doing and he played guitar really well and yeah. I was when we met for the first time and chit-chatted I was like, you know, I have a song I'm working on can I send you the, the demo I made of it and it was just me on a piano just pounding out chords and and singing the verses and everything and he sent me that track in like a week and I listened to it and I That's wanted to it. cry and yeah. I was like, oh my God, he got it. He uh, he knew where I was going. And, you know, you some... feel Spanish, right? Yeah. It's probably a Spanish guitar too, right? It was, an, it was a nylon classical guitar. Yeah. So, so um, you know, and he just made that arrangement work and it was fantastic so i was really glad we were able to use it on the uh, on the album and i and people really enjoyed it it's a little change of pace most of the album is is more classical oriented mm-hmm. but you know andrea bocelli does it all the time so why not me that's <laughs> hey hey you know like <laughs> so it was a lot of fun we have um another recording yes um Nobody sleeps. <laughs> uh, Nessun, From Turindo, yeah. or Turindot. <laughs> Nessun Dorma is kind of just... Nessun Dorma. It's become kind of the most popular operatic aria, and, and that's totally due to Pavarotti having sung at so many events. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just very sweeping, and I think people just connect to it. And um, So I had to have it on the album. The last opera Puccini uh, wrote. Yes. Actually, he didn't even finish it. No, I think Toscanini finished it. Uh, I forget who yes. finished it. It was one yeah. of his... It was definitely it was one of his students, I believe. But um, Toscanini was a student. Of- no, St- Toscanini was um, a contemporary and probably the greatest conductor of his time. Yeah, but he right. wasn't a. But he was uh, a friend of Puccini. Of Puccini right? Yeah, they were a friend. Yeah. He. They knew each other. P- yeah. Puccini, Toscanini, Caruso, and Paolo Tosti would often go to like cafes together and have have pasta <laughs> and a couple of drinks. <laughs> 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 So, but but tra- yeah, this is a Nessun Dorma on my album, and it's track 11. Track 11. Track 11.
just amazing. What was that high note? That was, that was a high B. That was a high B. And, wow. and Be My Love earlier was a high C. Wow. So, um, and that's, a, that's on my album. You can, you can go to iTunes. I'm on iTunes. I'm on Amazon.com. If you want a copy of the album itself, you can go to my website, enventertainment.com. That's E-A-N-D-V. Mm-hmm. Entertainment, and elegant can, and vintage entertainment. Thank you. You can also go to uh, toback.org, Town of Voice Today, Arts Council.org. Uh, in a week or two, this recording, this uh, interview will be on the website where you can enjoy all the beautiful music we play today. Incredible. At age 33, <laughs> where are you going? Where am I going? Um, He's going that way. <laughs> besides. <laughs> uh, I know, oh I know Emily and I are really trying to build a career where we're, we can perform throughout the country. And it's, it's slowly happening step by step. People are starting to know who we are. People are hearing about us. And that's really wonderful because we want to share this beautiful music. We want to share our voices. And um, I think we're both so passionate about it. I, I just, it's, it's a slow but steady move forward. And I'm, I'm really blessed that that is sort of the trajectory we're heading in. And we got to say it's been a pleasure having you today. You, you've been listening to My Art and Life with uh, Lauren Spiro, Gary Piacentini, and Vincent Ricciardi, or Vincent Ricciardi. <laughs> I never <laughs> said Ricciardi. I or, said or Ricciardi. Or Riccardi. Right. I, I get Riccardi a lot. So. <laughs> 88.1 <laughs> FM. And um, hey, let's, let's take it away, okay? And we'll see you next week. 